just went through the thing. So the guys went fishing one day and we went out to Santa Clara. So Debbie and I and my sister were riding bikes. More as a joke, but it was actually what I wanted to do. I ran in the three wheeler. And the lady's like, Hey, the adult trike over here. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> We didn't have the big bass. <laughs> and, and, and the guys, they came back to pick us up at the end of the day. And they saw us yeah, going, and he said, I think that was on a tricycle. You're probably more important. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks for that. We're talking here. Was that too hard? A little. I'm sorry, Brad. I didn't mean to It's my screensaver, so. But you can see me. Look at my Oh, I want to be. I think I'm going to try to get it. You don't have to worry about falling over. You can go pick up some groceries. And we can show you went shopping. So I was like putting stuff in the bag. It was fun. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the March 20th Mosquito Norway School Board meeting. This meeting has been posted. Attendance roll call. Mr. Buckmaster. Here. Mr. Hyde. Here. Mrs. Warwick. Here. Present. Mr. Petpolsky. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Everyone stand for the pledge. <laughs> To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item E, approval of the agenda. Can I get a motion to the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Any changes to the agenda as proposed? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Sorry. Um, moving on to consent agenda. Item two. Can I get a motion for consent agenda? So moved. Should I get a second? Did I move or second? I don't know. You said. Uh, I'll second. I'll okay. let you in there. <laughs> um, I'm going to pull item D out separately. Is there anything else that needs separate consideration? Hearing none. Rick. All do you want to pull out F as well? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. And D and F. Thank you. D and F. Yes. All those in favor of consent agenda with the exceptions of item D and F say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Right. Aye. On item D, on that separate D, that's the termination contract to the agreement between the City of Muskego and the Muskego Norway School District. There's a couple of <coughs> amendments I'd like to propose. Does everyone have it up in front of them? Okay. Um, I'd like to... Oh yeah, can, can someone bring that to the floor, please? And then we can talk about it. Move to the second. All right. On a, uh, the fourth, whereas... I'd like to remove. Unless you I, I get a count on two. The one that says due to the district's change in usage policy throughout the years that are now based on actual use, the parties agree that the city is no longer receiving any benefit okay. from blah, 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 blah. <coughs> I'd like to remove that whereas. No objection. And this marked. Um, Then moving on to the now therefore item number two, just add the words. It says that the city is not responsible for usage costs. Just add the word future between four and usage. And Dar, I can get these all to you afterwards. So. Yeah, I'm not logged in. So. Okay. <laughs> um, so between four and usage, just have future usage costs. 
not that they're responsible for anything in the past, but if we have something that's missing, I just don't want to. Do I have a motion to amend? Um, we can do it in, in mass, okay. unless there's separate, unless there's any objections to any of these. Okay. And then... Under items, item four, strike infield mix and team bench, team benches, and all signs placed on fences. Any questions on any of those items? Objection. Objections. All those in favor of the motion to amend, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Can I, and then all those in favor of the resolution as amended, say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you. And Julian, item F. Can we get a motion to approve item F? So moved. Second. Second. Lisa. Okay. Did you want to bring up? Do we need to defer that, or where are we at? On we that? can. Um, it was listed under consent, and we did get a copy of it back this morning with some comments from MAA. So we can defer it if we need to. But I wanted you to have a copy of the draft. The one concern that MAA has at this point is that we're looking at a five-year lease with them, and they have some concerns from a liability perspective about if they become the um, leasee of the property. If anybody, such as the Junior Warrior Program or other program, wanted to rent the facility, they would have to do it through them, which is how the contract is currently set up, and they don't know quite yet if they're comfortable with that. They may want to look at an April through September lease and then turn it back over to the district in, you know, on the off months. So we still have to have some discussion with them about that and what that means because if we do only a limited term lease, there's going to be nobody caring for those ball fields moving forward for those months that they're not under contract with us. And so we just want to be clear that they understand what type of work is involved because we won't maintain the fields. That was the purpose of moving forward with a lease like this. So um, just wanted to get your thoughts on it. If we did move forward with a limited term lease and junior warriors were to still utilize our fields, we'd have to come up with some sort of agreement with them as well because they were going through the city to rent the property beforehand. So... That's kind of where we're at at this point. Any comments or feedback? Well, the commencement date is supposed to be April 1st. Mm -hmm. We'd we'll have to push it to April 10th. Okay, would that affect like any scheduling for them? Have they got stuff? Have they, do they have fields scheduled already? Um, is Jeremiah here? Do you know, do, do they have anything scheduled? I don't think that they do at this time. Okay. So nothing before our next meeting? Okay. No. Does anyone have any objections to, and I'm not sure which way is the best way to go forward on this, is if we require them to be the sole agent on it, if their main concern is Junior Warriors football for their usage they have, do we want to have two separate agreements, one with Junior Warriors for their football usage separate from this? Because they're using fields that, they're not using the baseball fields, they're essentially using the grass and then the lights at Mill Valley later in the season. Yeah, basically what we could do is talk to MAA, um, just from a liability perspective, if we were to rent the fields to Junior Warriors, they could essentially do the same thing. They would just have to have certain um, liability limits in place, and I know that they do have certificates of insurance to prove their insurance coverage as an organization. So if MAA is comfortable with accepting those certificates, then liability would be off of them. Um, so we still need to have that conversation with MAA. So this could go forward as is, but if not, we could do two separate agreements. Why don't as long as you're okay with that. Get both parties in the same room and okay. at least talk about it. Okay. And see which way. I'd, my gut is I'd rather have one agreement. It's cleaner. It's simpler. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if they have some compelling reason not to go that route, I'd be comfortable with paying them. Okay. Do you have a motion to defer? Or? Can I get a motion to defer? Move to defer. Any second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And defer to the next meeting. All right. That may have been the longest consent agenda we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to item three, student representation. 
Miss Lucas, how are you doing today? I'm grand. Grand. All right, I don't have too much today, so just stick with me. Uh, this past Saturday morning, 10 members of the MHS forensic team, forensics team competed in the WHSFA district tournament at Burlington, and all 10 earned scores high enough in their speech categories to advance to the WHSFA <laughs> state tournament, which will be held April 22nd at the University of Wisconsin. And then the only other thing I have to say is that MH, uh, MHS Student Council will be hosting our uh, charity week, which got started last year. We're going to do that again, and this year it's going to be a little different. We're doing something special. We're going to have two days in which all the proceeds from the donations are going to go to the Judean Week family and to support Natalie. So that's our nice uh, little change this year. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions? Any questions for Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item four, public forum. I did get a number of cards that people filled out that um, typically when they fill, anyone can come and talk to fill, public forum, you don't need to fill out a card. If you fill out a card, you can talk about an agenda item, but we don't have an agenda item about the in issue you're writing down. So you can come up and talk in the microphone, talk to the board about it. Um, we cannot converse back with you. So um, I guess we'll go in order. We'll start with Angie, or Angie, is it Angie or Angela? Okay. okay. <laughs> Ignore my order. Come up as you please. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Benjamin Sanchezki, and I'm a sophomore at the high school involved in three sports, one club, and most importantly, my studies, taking a full load. Um, I've always liked Mosquito's missions of every student lo learning, growing, and succeeding, um, and I've prided myself for taking accelerated classes in math, science, and English, and I work hard every day. I was looking forward to my third year of German, which would help me with my college choices. As a freshman, I made a commitment to taking three to four years of German to be successful in applying to more selective colleges. I would like the district to reconsider getting rid of German at this time or to consider phasing it out over the next two years. Had I known that when I committed my freshman year that my third year would be online learning, I probably would have made a different choice. I don't think that it's right for the school not to hold up year end. And again, I would like the district to reconsider uh, German or to phase it out over the next two years to continue its mission of helping me, one of its students, to be more successful. Uh, we will be putting in a formal written request to Dr. Thompson to have this put in the agenda for April. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, my name is Angie Lee and I'm a 10th grader at Muskego High School. I have been in the German program here for three years and the Spanish program for two. And as a bilingual student, I believe that it is very important for people to learn different languages, not only to get accepted into colleges, but because it breaks down language barriers all around the world. And I was very disappointed to find out that a week ago that the school has decided to shut down the German program. As a student who has committed three years into the German program, I was upset because I was hoping to aim for AP German. And I realized that the online course of German is available, but it is not the same learning environment in which a student is able to like quickly communicate confusions and everything with a teacher. Thank you. Leo? Hi, I'm Leo Ponteri, and I'm also a 10th grader at Mosquito High School, and I did not sign up for a German online because I felt it could be it wouldn't be the same learning environment that we had in the classroom because German is a very difficult class. Instead, we hope to have the district keep the German program or phase it out over the period of two years to help us students achieve our goals. This also helps decide whether they will commit the time into the German program. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. So as I said earlier, we cannot reverse back with you on this subject, but I can make sure that we do follow up. And just so you guys get the correct follow up, how did you become, or have you talked to anyone, any of your counselors or anything? Have they given you any reasoning where we came up with a rationale on this yet or not? 
We have not. Okay. Um, I will have Mr. Peterson take care of it. Some appropriate people will be having discussions with you, and if you want to, at that point, contact any of us board members, feel free to do so. Thank you for coming, and I know it's not easy to talk in public forum, so I'll give you guys a lot of credit. Thanks. All right. Moving on to item five, superintendent's report. Mr. Peterson, place of Dr. Thompson today. I kind of feel like I'm going from uh, at the Thanksgiving table from the little kids' table to the adult table <laughs> sitting here. So um, <laughs> happy to, uh, to fill in for Dr. Thompson uh, while she's not here. With that said, we are going to begin the superintendent's report with several different recognitions. Um, so we'll go up to the mic here and we'll begin. So the very first recognition is uh, for Eagle Scouts, um, recognition for Nate Kinsler. Uh, Nate had participated in a project um, that involved making a buddy bench for Country Meadows Elementary. And while there, it, it appears that there are, there's really only one f purpose to it, physical, um, I built a bench and it's now at Country Meadows, there is far more significant meaning to that and that there is a so social aspect to that in that when students do not have someone to socialize or play with, students will go to this funny bench, sit there, and when other students recognize that on the playground, they will go up to that particular peer or individual and ask them to join in in some type of activity. So there's a social connection that students are making. And uh, Nate also... Uh, after he built the bench, decided that he was going to go present this concept to all of Country Metal's classes so that they understood the function of the bench and how to use it. And uh, Nate has reported back that the bench is actually being used by students today. So with that said, we'd like to recognize you. The Mosquito Norway School Board presents a certificate of, re of grateful recognition to Nate Kinsler for his service to the Mosquito Norway community as an Eagle Scout. Through his vision, dedication, and leadership, Nate built and installed a buddy bench on the Country Meadows Elementary School program <laughs> to earn Eagle Scout status. The project demonstrates caring and compassion towards students who may be in need of the bond of friendship and social interaction with others. The Mosquito Norway School Board commends Nate for his contributions and dedication, dedicated service to the students and citizens of the Mosquito Norway community. Thank you and best wishes in your future career endeavors. Congratulations. Eagle Scout recognition, Nick Buskey. Nick's Eagle Scout projects landed him at Lake Danoon Middle School where he actually planted 60 different trees and he did that all by hand with the help of other volunteers. He placed those trees along the cross country trail to serve as wind protection to the runners and other users of, of the nature trail at Lake Danoon. Additionally, he planted those trees, uh, some additional trees along the basketball courts of the Lake Noon Playground to offer wind screening also. The only negative that I could see to it is that it takes away the home court advantage for anyone <laughs> playing basketball at Lake Noon because they won't be able to play the wind anymore. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, 250 hours of uh, digging and planting and collective uh, volunteerism by Nick and his, uh, and his peers. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for you as well. Uh, I'll read it. Uh, the Certificate of Appreciation of the Siegel Norway School Board presents the Certificate of Grateful Recognition to Nick Busby for his service to the Siegel Norway community as an Eagle Scout. Through his vision, dedication, and leadership, Nick coordinated a tree planting project on the Lincoln Middle School property to earn his Eagle Scout status. 
The project was an extensive effort involving much manual labor with the planting of 34 trees on the Lake Canoe Middle School property. The trees that use to the property and provide shelter from the wind on the cross country trail. The Seattle Norway School Board commended Connect for his contribution to the student assistance of the Seattle Norway community. Thank you and best wishes in your future career endeavors. Red light is No, we're building a few schools and we, uh... <laughs> <laughs> or next wall. <laughs> our next re recognition involves three individuals that are employees of our district. Now, you may have heard that Muskego currently has uh, a natural, natural turf football field and we are currently the only school district in the Classic A Conference that has a natural turf field. Uh, besides that, we have gotten national recognition for the care that our grounds crew has shown and demonstrated in the, uh, in the care for the particular field. It was voted this past year as one of the top 85 uh, best fields in the country, uh, which is a pretty standout recognition for these particular gentlemen. So with that said, we'd like to recognize them and thank them on behalf of the district and our community for their efforts. Thank you. So we have certificates for all three of you, and I'll read it. Uh, the Certificate of Appreciation, the Mosquito Norway School Board congratulates uh, Mosquito Norway staff member Daryl Runge for his contribution to making significant improvements in the Mosquito High School football field. The improvements have involved extensive effort over time, which has brought recognition of the MHS field from Pioneer Athletics as a field of excellence. This recognition comes to a very limited number of organizations nationwide. The Mosquito Norway School Board is pleased to commend Daryl for his service dedication, service and dedication to excellence, which brings pride and honor not only to himself, but to the MHS athletes and the entire Mosquito Norway community. And it's dated uh, today's date and signed by the officers of the board. Congratulations. <laughs> Sorry, I was zero one by one. And you each, all three of you have the same ones. Adam Miller. Same one. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. And I got it, it, not only the football field, these, these gentlemen take care of all the athletic fields at the high school and, you know, from the baseball fields to, you know, soccer fields and softball fields. And um, as a, well, recently previous parent of an athlete at the MHS, constantly we were getting compliments um, from other teams. Um, I don't mind being the only team in the Classic 8 with not having turf. I, you know, I, I kind of look at it as the Wrigley of uh, the Classic 8. <laughs> 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 it presents a little bit of a home court advantage. Um, you know, that being said, I understand the need for uh, Astral Turf, but you guys do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just give our appreciation to the board for uh, putting your trust in us when we came to you two years ago and asked to uh, do this in-house. Um, it took a lot of guts on your guys' part to go out on that limb and, and give us that chance, and uh, we couldn't have done it without your approval. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, we do it for the kids. Thank you very much. Continuing on with the superintendent's report, annually we have our school resource officers provide an update with some of the work that they are presently doing in our, in our system, not just the middle schools and high school, but also some of the work that they become involved in at our elementary schools. So joining us to give us that update this evening would be, um, from my left to the right, would be Captain Simonchek, Lieutenant Kraus. Officer Nowicki, Officer Cortese, and Officer Hendrickson. So we are turning the floor over to you to provide 
uh, an update for us. If you work real quick, um, like again, on behalf of the police department administration, I'd like to thank you guys for having us, and on behalf of the current staff here, um, we look forward to answering any questions you may have and giving a brief report uh, from each of the schools. I'd also like to introduce Lieutenant Krause, who's taking my spot. He had some promotions, so he's going to be the direct supervisor of the services and the service. So, thank you again. Thank you, Lieutenant Krause. Um, like I said, I'm just starting to, to learn what the, my role is here. Um, look forward to working with the SROs and the, the school administrators. Uh, unfortunately, one of my first jobs was to forward the stats from the SROs, and I was not able to get that to you electronically prior to the meeting. I do have paper copies here this evening if you'd like them now. I can also forward the uh, electronic copies uh, at a later time. Any preference? I'll take a look at it. Yeah, if you have yeah. Mm -hmm. The one thing we'll if you can make sure the microphone's in front of you, um, not so much for people here, but people tuned in and recording on the internet. done in the years past. Um, currently what we're looking at doing is um, relaunching our Crime Stoppers program. We have a quick 50, quick 25 program that um, people are able to provide information and um, depending on the result of the information, earn some cash. Um, it's been a good program for us in the past. Uh, with the new technology, it's now going to be made available through an app, which is called P3. We're working on getting some signage. Um, throughout the building, so students, staff, you know, anyone can report information regarding the high school or anything else they see in the community uh, to us, and we can address it as those uh, tips and information come in. So we're going to um, relaunch the Crime Stoppers program. Also, another thing um, that we try to get out to some of our special needs uh, families, we have an MSNAP program, which is Muskego special needs awareness program, and we're currently working on pushing that information out to our families again in need so that when law enforcement um, has a contact with some of these kids outside of school, that the officers can have some clues and hints and ways to, um, you know, help them in their time of need. Um, so we've got that going on. Um, we continue to work on the emergency response team uh, board and look at security things throughout the district, drills, things of that, that nature, and move us forward and try to keep us up with what some of the neighboring communities are doing. <laughs> Lastly, um, the three of us are going to be working with the school district on some truancy stuff. Um, it's been brought to our attention that um, we don't have a truancy citation in Muskego, which you know we're all aware of. Some of the other jurisdictions have it. Um, it's not something that we have at this time, but we're going to look at some other options to maybe get kids to come to school, um, possibly some home visits if need be. Um, some of us knocking on a couple doors, um, but just to, um, you know, work to get them in school and hopefully learning, growing, succeeding. All right. All right. Well, I'm Officer Cortese. I am now entering my third year, so I'm starting to find some stability here and realize what it, realizing what my role is after um, this summer having gone through the basic SRO of school. So now I'm finally realizing like how important my role really is, and I'm starting to really build those relationships with um, the middle school age kids to help with their overall decision making so they know where they can come to when they need help, um, more than just uh, trouble, you know, like you're in trouble type person for them to come to. Um, so one of the ways I'm doing that is I'm working with our PBIS and I do the morning announcements, um, the positive behavior 
um, that they do. So it's more so, I do the announcements when we have the red ticket winners. So every week there's names that are drawn. The kids earn the tickets for their positive behavior throughout um, the day, every day. And they enter them in for drawing. So I've always taken the lead of doing those announcements and then making those connections with the kids when they come in um, for their awards that they're getting, you know, for that weekly drawing. Uh, as always, the um, working with our PPS department and relaying for any information on students that I feel may be in crisis because of things going at home, so I can relay that information over to our PPS department, so that way there they can um, check in with the students and meet their needs because what we as adults might experience as a crisis is that much harder on a child. So some of the stuff that we deal with um, in law enforcement and officers that might be at a house the night before, you know those kids aren't going to be likely to reach out and tell everybody, you know, so it's, if it's something I can get a head start on before we start to see behavior issues, I think that's all the better we can do for them. Um, one of the other things I really worked on was the fire drills, is we are actually in our building, um, which is the Bayline Country Meadows combined, is we have now um, started reconfiguring and rearranging where people are going, and we're doing a full body accountability, which I think, and we've got our time down now, so it took a little bit of time to try to figure out, you know, like on how we're going to do the full body accountability, but it's work. I've also spent some time on our actual off-site evacuation reunification process with um, Ms. Rajeski and Ms. Arnson and going to our actual off-site evacuation point, mapping everything out, figuring how we're going to do it with the logistics of cars coming in for pickup if we're going to be having picking up and how we are going to arrange the students that are in there so we can have that accountability once we get over there. So those are some of my big things that I've worked on this past year. And I'm turning it over to Eric. Good evening. Uh, my name is Eric Nowicki. I'm with the school resource officer at Lake Newton, and I also have responsibilities at Mill Valley and Lakeview School as well. Um, just to you know, kind of go off with those uh, my two fellow cohorts have said, um, we're there, we're a presence every day. Uh, we're still, uh, at least Officer Cortez and I are still doing the D.A.R.E. program. And we've, um, since you guys now allow the canines into the buildings, we haven't had any uh, hits at the uh, middle school level. So that's, uh, you know, kind of proud of that fact. Um, you know, our, our presence is there every day. Uh, we work on, um, you know, anti-bullying. You know, we're trying to really uh, get a, a strong hold on that and try to get the message out there. Um, and I, I just want to, is Jeremiah still here? I mean, we, yeah, we do have the ERT. He's been, you know, just <coughs> fabulous and get us all on board, making sure our schools are, you know, up to the, um, you know, where, where we need, all need to be for safety for our students and our staff. Um, so that's basically what I have. We've been doing this for quite a few years. I basically opened up to you guys have any questions. I mean, like I said, we're, we're there every day. We're committed. Uh, I say that for I speak for all of us, and I think we all like our jobs. We all like the kids, and um, that's about all I have. So, if, uh, we're open. any questions? We're all we're all here and willing to answer any kind of question you guys have. You want us to be more specific on certain things? Please, questions? Yes. I've got it. Uh, your I just got to say that and the question. So, Officer Kurt, hey, you do an awesome job regulating traffic. During the morning drop off with those adult parents that are supposed to be able to drive good, right? So right. thank you, <laughs> excellent job. Uh, and uh, but to uh, Kenneth, the, the the high school. So I'm I'm kind of focused on that. So this canine, um, you know, as far as the searches go and stuff, how is that received and stuff? And what's your impression so far? I think that it's helped. Um, I feel like um, you can't tell if they're doing less drugs or not bringing them to school. But we are getting, um, you know, uh, less hits. We're, we're finding less things in vehicles. We're not finding, I don't know if they're not really using their lockers, if you've seen their backpacks. So, um, yeah, the lockers, my son has used his locker in three years. Yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> the lockers really, um, but proactively now we do classrooms. And um, so what happens, what that looks like is, um, law enforcement and administrative staff will go into the room and they'll make an announcement and the kids will leave their property in there and they will be taken to another room in the area 
Um, we keep them away from the dog per department or per um, school district policy. And um, then the dog will come in and he'll just walk around the room, sometimes on leash, sometimes we close the door, and then he'll just go through. And, um, you know, we're using that as a deterrent. Now, if um, someone has something like in their pocket, obviously the dogs don't sniff people. But um, if it's uh, marijuana, likely the scent is on their property. So it would um, indicate on that. But I think that um, we do a good amount of canine searches. We um, have multiple outside and multiple inside throughout the school year. So we're not doing one a month, but it's relatively close. And my, thank you. And then my last question is, and this is kind of, this could be for the middle schools too, but I, I guess I'm more focused on the high school. So we put in a lot of policies and the board discusses and debates and there's perspectives all over the place about you know, whether the data supports doing this or not from the random year analysis, testing the searches. Um, what are we doing, I guess, or are there any other challenges that uh, we need to look at, like vaping, or any other types of areas that we need to focus on? Well, I, I have to tell you, as far as vaping goes, two years ago and last year, it was really hot. And we still see it a little bit, but not as much. Um, and with the vaping, when we get um, the, the units, they use are called mods or modules. So the, when we get the mods, we do test them to see if they're um, vaping anything that's got like marijuana content in it. And we have not found anything of that nature. Um, it's got, it's just their, their juice, and sometimes the juice may have nicotine in it, but we are not testing for nicotine. So I have to say that the vaping has gone down. It's really, um, I don't know if it's a fad or a trend, but we're seeing less of it in school. Thank you. You've said a number of times where you've talked about, um, especially with the um, canine searches, that you, know, you don't know if the kids are bringing them, to, just not bringing them to school, if they're using it less. Do you have any statistics that are back that you guys track for? I, w I would think if kids are using less, you're going to have less arrests outside of the school day as well. Is there any correlation, or have we seen any changes in the amount of you know possessions and everything else away from school? Those are statistics that we could put together. I'm just curious yeah, if it's I, mean, I, I, I need to just venture a guess at this point, but uh, we certainly can make that available. Okay. Yeah, I was just, I, I'm just curious because I'm guessing if the if usage has gone down, you're going to see that across the board, not just in school. Any other questions? Uh, I'll just ask briefly. Uh, one of my pet with the with uh, Officer Hendricks, uh, traffic at the high school. Is are they behaving themselves pretty good now come release time? Um, you know. <laughs> One of the things that we have an issue with, and it's design, is the little, I call it the driveway, or the drive through The drive through is where the health center is. Um, and we try to um, hold cars during bus traffic times, whether with cones or with a squad, just so people aren't cutting through there. It's a safety concern for kids walking through that bus lot. Um, and uh, it's posted that parents aren't supposed to drop off there, but we do still see a little bit of that. Um, but the but the driving through, if we're if we're there and we're a presence there, or we've got cones there, it's helpful. But you know, I'd really love it if it was grass and they couldn't drive. Through. They put up sorry, what was I'd that? love it if it was grass and they couldn't drive through. Over oh, where, where, where? Do you know where, where the health center is? No, looping the building on the north. East side of it. Now, if you, as you come in to go to the main, oh, let's see if you hang up. If you right. were to turn oh, right, like that, go to the health center area oh, you there. Want that I love room. it. Yeah, I don't think the fire department would like that. Though. <laughs> There's plenty of it. <laughs> <in> <laughs> <those things. laughs> I wish a fire truck can drive over grass. <laughs> Not when it's wet. Well, we do allow that at what bushies where on the cul-de-sac that's their egress where they can actually knock down those posts. And they only put those pylons up, and we have that so that the fire department those pylons are set somehow where they. The sense integrator, I don't know, but they fire a truck and drive over them. So there may be some kind of pylons that go up and down. Is something we can do? It's like a traffic, right? It's like in your way, an obstruction. Uh, Through the lot, though, um, you know, if you're not exactly where they are, they don't follow the lot, the arrows. You know, you can sit in one spot, and they're going to drive. It, everybody wants to get out at 2.30. I mean, class is out at 2.25. Everybody wants to be out of that parking lot by 2.30. They don't want to be stopped for the buses. 
Um, so um, I don't want to be there at two. Well, right. <laughs> you know, I, I always say, you know what? Just just you know, walk slow, take your time. If you if you pull out at two forty, you are going to drive straight out, no problem, no traffic. Two forty. I used to tell my daughter so, just wait 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Just, just study, down, study down at the cafeteria for 15 minutes. I think we can lower the tax rate just on tickets that can be issued there the way they drive through there. <laughs> <laughs> they have been issued, students have been given tickets for driving the wrong way in the parking lot. I can tell you that. Good. Hmm. I have no problem pulling parking passes or anything else for bad driving. Absolutely, field, and so. we do that. We do that. So we do. So will they actually pull? Oh, for sure. The administrators? Um, we give them information that, you know, the kids are driving the wrong way um, through uh, a lot of the camera work or our um, staff will give us um, license plates of a kid that or, drove the wrong could, way. Definitely, they do pull parking permits. <laughs> do they pull it off the first time they do it, or do you give them a warning and a ticket? Or um, It's going to depend on what their driving history has been. I let them, that's a administrative, that's a high school decision. I write the tickets, they pull the permits, so whatever they decide. Yeah, that's right. I recall it. I mean, there's only so much we can do, but as long as we try and keep on it. It's all about safety. We come up with an idea about uh, limiting traffic to cut through by the buses there, that egress we were talking about. Yeah. Okay. Let us know. Okay. Perfect. Any other questions? We appreciate the partnership we have with you guys. I think it's, uh, you know, it's always, I think probably from the, both the city side and the school district side, it's always something that, you know, you look at during budget time, it's a big number, um, but it's, uh, it provides a lot of value uh, service both from, you know, the city side from law enforcement and the student side through their development and gaining their relationship that they get with uh, law enforcement. Um, you know, my, my kids are 22 and 19 and still think uh, Erica is a friend of theirs and, uh, you know, those are relationships that will last forever and, um, you know, that's the more positive context you, that people can have with law enforcement, the better it makes your job just makes them more willing to talk to when, when they see things that aren't going right. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Moving on, uh, in the superintendent's report to item 5E, we have our biannual intervention effectiveness report. <clears throat> Two times per year, we receive an update regarding our effectiveness of our Tier 2 and Tier 3 reading and math interventions. And Dr. Ted Gatterman is here tonight to uh, present his findings around how effective our Tier 2 and Tier 3 interventions are. All right, so just give me 10 seconds here to get this set up. Uh, this is my last report to the board, so I'd like to actually begin uh, by sincerely thanking all of you. Uh, I've been in the district, uh, the end of this year would be 10 years, and um, it's been a great experience working for Muskego Norway. I started out as special ed program support, then uh, was coordinator of special ed for a little while, coordinator of pupil services, and then for the last few years, uh, the director of assessment and student services. And it's been a great experience, and I've been so appreciative of all of the opportunities that I've been given, the training I've been given, um, our conversations over the years. And so I didn't want to um, leave without saying thank you, sincere thank you to all of you for that. So, and actually many of you were here. I remember coming in when I was hired, uh, Joe Schrader bringing me in and me thinking, what in the world were they thinking when they hired me for this? But I think it's turned out all right. And, um, you know, there's so much that I'm, that I'm proud of that we've worked on as a team over the years. One of the things, though, that I would say I'm most proud of is our response to intervention system. We really built it. We had nothing. When many districts had uh, a lot of things kind of started and going on, and really we built it from, from one reading intervention uh, that was really just for first grade students and one, one math intervention that was really deployed just in one building to a very robust system of, you know, multi-tiered system of supports to really provide support to students. Um, and one of the things, so I still go to um, 
other districts where we see, you know, and, and talk about things that are going on. And there are so many things that we're doing that other districts still aren't doing. And this would be one example of it, which is coming to the board on a regular basis, having a conversation about how are we doing with our interventions. I just, I believe in that transparency, but I also believe it's good for me to know that, you know, we're going to be talking about this at some point, so it helps me keep my eye on the ball as well. So I've tried to keep uh, a lot of the presentation similar to what you've seen in the past. So we can go fairly quickly through some of the slides, but I'll explain them as we go. First of all, um, there is no set target from anybody. DPI, the RTI Center, they don't say it should be this amount of students, but they've advised us. We've gone to both of those groups, and they've said, you know, about 70% of students who are in an accelerated intervention, we should be seeing results. That would suggest that things are going well. But they also don't offer the goal set. So where should we be setting the goals? I mean, we can set the number of, of um, you know, the 70% threshold, but then, so what, what is the goal that would constitute that? We've set ours for the 40th percentile. Many districts set theirs lower, but our philosophy going in was we didn't want this yo-yo effect of having students in intervention dismissed, in intervention dismissed. And so we set it at the 40th percentile. That's statistically well within the average range. And what we found is we have very few students who actually, where we see that yo-yo effect. Um, so we're, we're really, we're very pleased with that. Another thing that sets us apart is that we set ambitious goals for every student. And so in talking with um, a number of districts around here, they set different students based on a variety of factors for students. But I felt very strongly, and our team felt very strongly, that every student learning, growing, and succeeding means it doesn't matter where you start, we're setting your goals high. And we expect you to achieve at those levels. So we also have ambitious goals for every student uh, in our system. So when we look at intervention effectiveness, we've used the targets. This is Ames Web is our progress monitoring tool. Uh, it's the tool that we give on a weekly basis to evaluate how effective uh, or the progress that students are making toward their goal. And so if students, if they're at target or near target, they're considered to be meeting their goal. If they're below target, they're not. The areas that we measure, uh, we look at reading and math. And then within reading, we have early literacy skills reading fluency and reading comprehension. Within math, we have early numeracy, problem solving, and then computation. So I know if you have any questions, I just, we've covered this before, so I wanted to uh, get through that fairly quickly. Our reading interventions. So these are currently the tier two and tier three reading interventions which are approved uh, for use across the district. Stepping stones to literacy and phonemics are the newest ones for kindergarten, and we've seen some great impact with those. Um, but uh, otherwise, those are the interventions that you've seen before. So, I really wanted to be able to come to you, especially in this final time, and say that we've, we've uh, wrapped our heads around reading fluency and that we've figured out the formula. Um, unfortunately, we haven't. I'm not coming, I can't come here and tell you that. Um, we are still below that 70% effectiveness, and quite honestly, our, our profile has been fairly flat across the district. Now, that's with the exception of of one building, and actually, and I'm going to name but I don't usually name buildings, Lake De Noon has absolutely rocked it with reading fluency. They've done some uh, pretty innovative things, and they have seen some really significant positive effects. Um, but otherwise, across the district, that's just still an area that we're struggling. Um, so, and I'll come back around that a little bit later, what some potential next steps are, but um, well, I would have loved to have told you that we got that one nailed, but we don't. Reading comprehension. That's been one that's been historically very, very strong. Uh, and since we've started this, we've always had above 70%. And actually, most buildings, it's more like 90, 85, 90%. So uh, we do very, very well with reading comprehension. Early literacy skills. Um, I don't know why the red got, the numbers got uh, read it out behind there. Uh, they weren't on my copy, but they are here. But anyway, so early literacy skills, um, generally speaking, doing pretty well. Nonsense words, uh, well, I would like to have seen them all read, and actually it's, um, it's like 67%. It's actually fairly close. Um, I would have, while it's not quite green, and while I've told you before I don't make excuses for things that aren't green or call them yellow or something, you know, even if it's close, nonsense words, that is a skill that, that kindergarten students tend to learn later in the year. So while I would like to have seen it green, um, my, I would anticipate that by the end of the year that we should be in pretty good shape uh, with that. 
but I wish we were there now, but we're not. But we will be. Okay. Next, math interventions. So uh, this past year, we added AVMR and math recovery as a tier two and tier three intervention for math. Um, aside from that, the interventions are the same as they've been. And our philosophy, just as a reminder, is um, we've tried to have as few interventions as we've needed to get the job done. Because frankly, every time we had an intervention, we had cost, just of the intervention itself. Um, we had training, which managing the training for 60-some interventionists um, across a variety of different interventions is challenging enough. Um, so, our, so we really, you don't see interventions just added for the sake of adding them. They're added when we discover a gap. So that's why you see some of the repetition, because if they're working, we don't mess with them. Math count, uh, so in the last couple of times that I've reported out, uh, we've done okay with problem solving, above 70%. Math computation, we've struggled with. Um, this time, we just eked over that 70%. We're not at 90%, but we eked over the 70%, which I'm excited about. Um, but there is a caveat to that that I'm going to explain in just a bit, because we're going to uh, start calculating things a little bit differently uh, to, to make it. It's going to be a little tougher uh, to be in the green. Uh, early interventions or early numeracy, great in all areas. And actually, last year at this time, those were all red. So um, some of the uh, some of the early math interventions that we put into place have uh, have demonstrated some efficacy. So we're really excited about that. So this compares where we were uh, last year and this year. So in reading comprehension, like I said, that's been real solid, uh, 90 percent, 85 percent this year. Uh, just to, just We've got good stuff going on there. We're very confident. We've got great trainers. Reading fluency, we've struggled. We continue to struggle. Early literacy, we've seen growth in early literacy this year. <coughs> Math computation, the top one should, I'm not sure why it's highlighted green, but it should be, if red is appropriate, um, it's math computation we struggled with last time. We got over the hump this time, but, um, well, I'll talk about the but in just a sec. So, uh, concepts and applications, great, green, green. And early numeracy, again, we, we saw we had significant issues with that uh, previous time around. This time around, we've had some great growth. So overall, I mean, I'm pleased with the growth. Obviously, um, I'm not satisfied till it's all green, but it's generally speaking, it's the right direction. So when we talk about uh, intervention, a uh, question that, that, that always comes up is, how many students are we currently serving? So currently, K-12, we're serving about 479 as of January of this year. Um, the majority of students, appropriately, at the elementary level, we want to get in there early. We want to do our interventions early. Um, and that's, if you can get to it early, then you, you don't have to deal with all the psychological side effects of, of multiple years of failure. It's just a, it's an important time to get in there. Middle school, uh, slightly less. High school is less, but that's an artificially low number. Uh, we actually have some capacity issues there where we, we haven't been able to serve all of the students that we probably would serve. Um, but overall, when you look at the tiered interventions, typically between 15 and 20 percent of your students are in some sort of an intervention. And actually, overall in the district, we're actually in really good shape. Now, if we, if we had the capacity to take in every student at the high school, um, we would have more than 79, but we wouldn't be up at... 20%, we might be up, you know, two or three more percent, maybe, yeah, in that neighborhood. Dismissals. Um, again, this is just from September through January. Uh, almost 70 at the high school, 50 at middle, and 26 at the high school. So total dismissals, uh, so far this year, 147. So that was just sort of playing around and um, drilling down a little bit, and so there was a little bit more I wanted to look at. So we look at the number of students in intervention. It's interesting how we, it's, we're really disproportionately heavy on reading intervention. So at the elementary, 168 of the students are in reading versus math at only 79. Middle level and even high school level. So at all levels, um, we really have more of a need for reading intervention than we have for math intervention. When we look at dismissals, generally they're kind of in the ballpark, but it is interesting. We tend to do better with um, well, it's a little, it's so 
math at the elementary level, it's, it's you know, fairly close, 30 and 24 percent. Middle, 55 percent um, versus 27 percent dismissed. Um, and at the high school, again, pretty close in terms of the number of students who are dismissed from intervention. So I just thought that was just kind of interesting and another, you know, it's, it's um, there's so many different lenses you can look at when you're looking at this kind of data that gives you some insight into what's going on. And maybe it's just interesting to me, but I think it's kind of interesting stuff and something that we'll be uh, following up on with principals. So I want to, we talk about next steps. I actually need to come up with this one. I'll talk about it. So our current system, remember on that early slide, I said plus or minus 0.5 ROI. What this is, it's a graph for a student, all right? And so down here, all of these X's represent a test, an assessment that a student was given. So we assess them on a weekly basis. And over on the side, this is just hypothetical. This the expectation of words meant uh, read per minute, all right? So uh, we, we do a baseline assessment for the student. Then we, from there, uh, something called an aim line or a goal line is created by the software. So what that means is that if we're going to reach our goal on that aggressive path, this is how many words read per minute the student is going to need to do. Okay, so somewhere at seven. I mean, these again, this is made up, but just uh, illustrative. So they are going to need to grow at that particular rate. The trend line, the white line, is the student's actual performance. Okay, so we, we, we know where they're supposed to be, and we know where the trend line is. So in this particular case, the student's trend line is slightly above what the goal was for that particular student. Now, the way that we currently calculate um, ROI, whether they're meeting their progress, is that it's plus or minus 0.5 ROI. Now, if you're between the trend here, your actual performance, and here, that's that minus 0.5. 1, minus 0.2, minus 0.3, minus 0.4, minus 0.5. You're still closing the gap, okay? So I don't want you to think that you're not closing the gap if you're within this band. You are closing the gap, but you're not closing it as quickly as you really should be. And so we looked at using a formula, and we calculated it differently, to eliminate this bottom line. And so to get credit for being on track, you would have to be at or above your actual goal line. Okay, does that make sense? Did I lose you guys, or does that make sense? Okay. So the goal is to really kind of tighten it up so that you're, even though, again, this is closing the gap, but it's not closing it as quickly as we could be closing it. And uh, interestingly, so we saw that um, math, so we saw uh, some of the growth that we saw in math, but I said was, um, there's a caveat to that. As it turns out, we have a lot of students in this area, okay? So I was curious when we looked at the data, hoping they would all be above here, but a lot of them are kind of floating around in this area, which says they're making, they're definitely making better progress than they have been, but they're not making the same level of progress that I believe that they could be and should be. So the new calculation that we used, um, and, that, and we will be using in the future, will eliminate this bottom um, bracket so that it really is, they're on target, they're at or above their goal. Any questions about that? Okay. And so the last, I'll get back to the mic. So the last piece that I wanted to share, um, this is our fourth year of full implementation for RTI. And there tends to be a belief that, you know, it, it goes kind of like this. It, it's, it's a linear graph of, you know, if you put in this much time, your results generally look like this when you implement something. Implementation research is pretty clear that it looks more like this. So there's that initial dip, and then after a period of time, and that period of time tends to be three to four years, then we see it take off. Okay? Now what's a little scary is that where that arrow is, that oftentimes tends to be the place where we say, you know what, let's, let's do something else. I, we don't know that this is working. And so as I'm transitioning out, I just, we have a system that is working very well. Needs, you know, obviously it, every year it can be tweaked and improved, but I believe that we are just on the cusp of closing some of those gaps that we've started to close um, by really staying the course. We have a very unique um, RTI system. In fact, I was contacted today by the RTI Center because um, I haven't submitted, like, uh, you can be school of recognition, they have schools of recognition, all that, and I just haven't 
just haven't had the time, honestly, to fill those out. But I was actually contacted by them saying, I don't know why you haven't filled these out yet, but we'd like you to fill out some applications because we'd like to recognize your schools. So I'm just, I'm so proud of this work, but I'm really hoping that we continue to really invest the time uh, and energy that it takes to keep it going great, because it is going great. Um, so a change that we're doing this year with intervention effectiveness, the way that it's rolled out in the past is uh, myself, Bob Radke, Jen Gannerman, there's a small team of us that put together all the intervention effectiveness, and we kind of handed it to principals, and we really didn't have conversation, I kind of wanted them to take it from there to have conversations at the building level. This year, we flipped it, and I had the psychologists all come in, and we worked through the calculations at the building level, and then it fed up to me. So with the idea being that the psychologists now will sit down with the building principal, really be able to work through that data with them, and then that would go to their building teams so that those authentic conversations can happen. Um, I just don't know that in all the things that building principals do, they get lots of data from us. So I didn't know that that was really necessarily filtering down. So let's try filtering up, see what happens with that. Um, we also, this year we completed a review of progress monitoring tools, and we made some recommendations that will be a future consideration. There's some good stuff out there. We have a great system in place. But as, as time goes by, we have new tools that we can consider as well. Reading fluency. So if I knew the answer, I would just tell you. I'm not sure. I think we have to really take a step back and look at root cause. What is actually going on? Fortunately, we have one of our schools in the district um, is doing some really different things, and they're seeing some great growth. So my hope is, and we tried um, introducing some of that to the other schools, my hope would be really learning more about what they're doing there as well. I have a, we've been tweaking our reading interventions to include more fluency, because creating a whole new path or a whole new track just for reading fluency would be really, really heavy on the schedule. It's already challenging to do math intervention and reading intervention. Uh, you add reading fluency intervention to that, it just becomes a scheduling nightmare. So my hope would be that, my hope had been, we can make the tweaks so that we can get that shored up. Um, and that'll just be a conversation for the, for the next team. Um, and then the final next step really is just the July uh, report out. Uh, intervention effectus, which will be in the super capable hands of Dawn. So that's my report. Any questions? Ted, on the reading fluency, and you mentioned it's pretty much all the schools, but like to know. Um, is it certain grade levels that seem to pop up with more students than others for that, that are needing intervention? Um, that's a great question. So all of the school, the results from all of the schools have, with the exception this time of Lake Denewin, have been sort of hovering in the same percentage. Um, I'd have to look, I mean, there's just so much, I'd have to look at it to tell you that, but nothing stands out to me like there's one grade that really is right. the okay. one that's struggling. It, it's, um, reading fluency overall is um, philosophically in our district de-emphasized. So reading comprehension is really emphasized, but reading fluency is less so, because the belief is, well, if, if kids can understand what they've read, well then, you know, if they're not reading it quickly, is that really a big deal? It isn't a big deal at the elementary level. It's a monster at the high school. Because when kids can't keep up with what other kids are reading, when they can't keep up with reading the assignment, even if they can comprehend it, and actually, and as the text gets longer and more complex, what they used to be able to comprehend, just by reading it slowly, you, you suddenly start, that starts to fall apart too. So, um, so I think part of it is really re-looking at, you know, making that a bigger emphasis within probably regular ed and then figuring out from a support perspective. Because that's why when you look at um, reading interventions and they're um, in two of the, you know, two of the air, middle and high school, we, uh, or at least middle level, we're not closing as many. Um, it's really the, the, reading comp the reading fluency that we're struggling with. That's why they're not getting out of intervention. Mm -hmm. okay. So we've got some, I mean, we have some awesome people. You guys know that. And um, we're, get, we're just trying to find a way to do it without being so disruptive to the schedule with everything else, because it's already challenging um, with all the demands on the schedule. Well, I wonder if I asked you the same question last year. Anyway, yeah, because it just like felt very deja vu there for a second. Yeah. I know for me, too. I thought I came up red. I thought, oh, crap. <laughs> 
Well, yeah. but, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It's just curious, right? I mean, it just really is. Of the two, uh, it seems to me, I'm not a reading specialist, but I've spent a lot of time in this now. Of the two, between comprehension and fluency, fluency seems like the easier one we should be able to, to get. Um, it's just been a struggle. So, but we recognize it as that, and you know, and that's why we do this. You know, we don't we're not making any assumptions that things are working or aren't working. We know what's working. We know what isn't working. So, well, and I, and I sure hope that right, we, we continue to partner with parents because, you know, at least the little I know about you know reading, running reading logs and looking at, um, you know, how children read. Right, is that reading at home and having your child read out loud and your child hearing you read out loud so they hear what fluent reading sounds like yeah. and applying it to their own reading now. So again, maybe innovative programs bringing more parents and way to try yeah. to tackle this from different aspects too. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your work on this. Of course. Yeah, been happy to do it. Thank you, Ted. My pleasure. Thanks. Ted, what's the capacity issue at the high school? Um, it's really been kind of a, uh, a schedule, a schedule piece. I mean, I don't know if you can describe it better than I can really. I mean, we just, um, it really has been scheduling and getting enough, having enough places in the schedule to do intervention. It's trickier when suddenly you're earning credits, um, and there are just a lot of pulls on the time, and we just haven't been able to. We we did um, for next year. Um, there have been some changes to how we're now. The intervention has been um, different than many high schools. We actually have been pretty successful with both reading and math at the high school, despite the fact that. By the time kids are in high school, they pretty much believe they're, you know, I don't, I suck at reading and I'm not very good at math. You know, it's very hard to overcome that once you have that belief. Uh, but they've met, we have some awesome uh, teachers who are really making a, a great strides with that. Um, next year, there's been some changes to uh, what uh, what that intervention structure is going to look like. So we'll actually be able to double the number of students who are in intervention. My only hope is, you know, I hope we don't lose, you know, we want to be careful to find that balance between, you um, how many students we can serve, and then those students that we are serving, making sure that we have the, you know, within that intervention, the capacity to make sure they're growing. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Thank you very Thank much, Ted. Thanks, Ted. Thanks, Ted. And the last agenda item on the superintendent's report is 5F. That's just a standing item to um, to have you take a look at contributions to the profession that. Employees across our system are making. And with that said, that concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you. And the to other reports. Uh, President's report, I have none. Coach report. Reading it now. All right. Uh, we need to appoint a board of canvassers for the April 4th, 2017 school board election, not to include Buckmaster. And Bowman. Dar, what times do we usually do that? Uh, we typically do it now about the following Monday after the school board election. And you've uh, chosen sometimes to do it earlier in the day, sometimes later in the day, so it's your choice. Last year's been so efficiently run. So that's April 10th. <laughs> it was the most efficient. It wasn't it? <laughs> so what time? <laughs> where, where would you put just this? What? what would be a good time? So that's April 10th, Monday. Doesn't matter what time's good for him. He can't be on. No, no I can't no. be on. You said something about us. No, it, we, it, it was just for us. That's the school board meeting date, so that's okay. the next school board meeting date. No, you don't want to do that. No, just do it. The, the, uh, it I mean, you just find the time that, right? Because that's what we did when we negotiated. Well, Friday is the last day that provisional bills in uh, the, the city would be sending provisional bills to us. Do they have to, does it have to be done here? We do it at Maddie's, sir. Just kidding. <laughs> so, what time do the provisionals be here by on Friday? I would say by noon. Okay. So, we want to do Friday? I get, yeah, I can do it. Yes. Um, I'm. We hear the clerk, so I'm hoping you can be there. <laughs> available at 2.30 or later. Okay, I'll do it at 2.30. Rick. Anybody else do 2.30? We need one more person. Uh, April 7th. I, I can do it. If you need it. Okay. Can you read it? Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
2.30. She doesn't work on Mondays. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't say that. Well, it's, I know I work on part time schedule. Not we do other things on stage. So we need three, correct? Plus yes. yourself? Okay, yeah, two, so you have three. three. Mm -hmm. 2.30, Friday, April 7th, in Dar's office. Okay. Um, I'm going to back up the president's report because I lied. I do have one. Um, we have a request from our former board president who has a daughter that's graduating this year that if, she can, if he can participate in handing out diplomas. <coughs> um, now, we already have a full slate of people, so there's a number of options we can do. I mean, one of the people that have volunteered to Unvolunteer and decided they don't want to do it. Is that for him? Yes. I can unvolunteer. You sure? Yep, we can take him on Monday. Toby's a junior? Right. Okay. I just need to do the senior. Yep. All right. No, problem I will. Yeah, that's no problem. All right, Jim? Absolutely. And I guess the other question, are we okay to have more work to be here? Oh. You know, you know. Are we what? I mean, for, I mean, it's fine, you know, moving forward. I'm just saying we, we may want to consider at some point putting together some kind of matrix of. You know, if somebody comes back from 20 years ago oh. and they want to. You know, Jim um, obviously is recently right. enough, but it's easier to decide. Well, you'll probably have another request in about a year or two. <laughs> no, I don't have any more kids coming through. <laughs> All right. You. Problem solved. Um, moving on to other board member reports. Eh? I have just something briefly on Wednesday. Last Wednesday, I attended the WSB Day at the Capitol. Um, where they had a number of events. Uh, one was a uh, discussion among some le leading members of the Assembly and Senate discussing some of the proposals. Uh, it's, it's the WSB's hope that we can keep the 200 per year increase for the students. Um, it's all of our hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's all our hope. Um, they didn't commit to it completely. But they said it's, it's still in progress. We should expect something, at least. Um, that it, it, they weren't ready to commit the full 200. Uh, the other thing was, that uh, came up was hopefully getting rid of the September post-September 1st start date for the calendar. And one of the key figures for that, uh, Luther Olson, said he would not support it at all, and he didn't see it going through. But that might have just been a you know, way of him kind of browbeating everybody into Oh, unfortunately, Luther is very... He represents the Dells. Pardon me? He, he represents, represents the Dells. He represents yes. the Dells, unfortunately. Yeah. He's also mm -hmm. chair of the Education Committee. Yes. And he's got a very powerful He's very, he's very yeah. influential. Um, so, I mean, I, just, mm -hmm. I guess I would stop talking to the chair from yes. I, I think an organization it, standpoint. And yes, I, well, I would almost disseminate, have, have membership start disseminating it now. And every time I'm asked, I, I do something on a state level where I talk about them trying to change legislation. They want to hear from the organizations as much as possible, meaning you know, WASPA and everything else. So, and there are there are tools. Where the WSB is really promoting um, advocacy from all the all the members, not just the boards, but from individual members. There's right. tools out there. So hopefully, if we can get enough support among the members, the ones I talked to were open to it. They hadn't committed completely, but they hadn't dismissed it. So um, I think just like with prevailing wage, what was that two years ago? I think there's an opportunity to get rid of it. So, and, and quite honestly, there's you know, representation of the Dells that has no impact on this because they hired Eastern European kids to come and run up there all summer. Jennifer Schilling made that comment. <laughs> you see, that every time I go there, they all have Eastern European names, and they all say Russia, Ukraine, yeah, from where they, they're they from. Don't, high school kids don't want to work anymore. Well, I think part of it is they, they <laughs> want <laughs> to get that last weekend of family um, outing. So that's a big part of it as well. Not just the employee, but yes. Okay, thank you. Moving on. Item 7, resolution action items. 7A, capital projects approvals. Suburban kind of asphalt. Jeremiah. Motion to approve suburban asphalt to complete seal coating of parking lots at the high school, ESC, and West Lot in the amount of $55,995. So moved. Second. Jeremiah. So this is uh, one of the last capital projects that will be for next fiscal year, and uh, it involves all of that was described in here, but mostly all of the high school, all of the trails that lead up to the uh, ESC and the West Lot, and so 
we uh, bid it competitively in the suburban asphalt one. So I'm looking at the map here in our packet. There's different colors on everything. What is like the trail? Does that just mean it's a trail, like when it's blue, or? I think he just put the, the trails to mark out square footage when okay. he was counting, so that was just his own notes. Okay, so we're redoing all it. Yeah, it's pretty much every. So that trail going back to the baseball diamonds is yep. what we done. So everything in blue. It's going to be every every piece of asphalt on the property except for the new path that the city put. Oh, okay. Okay. Thanks. Which is another map. How long does the seal coating last for? Uh, two years is, is relatively good. Um, some areas we've gone for three years, and some areas we haven't been doing intentionally, like in Steve Elementary or Test Corners, just because it won't be ours. Okay. Did you say patching also? Yep, that involves patching too. Does that Salatine areas get pretty bad? The, uh, the uh, drains in the front line held up real well. Yeah, I think we yeah. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Moving on. Item 7B. Motion to approve suburban asphalt to complete an emergency exit loop around Lake Dune <coughs> in the amount of $23,150. So moved. Second. Uh, so this mainly has come out of our capital plan, which we list out all of the needs and then prioritize based on a weighting system. And really this one is a safety concern as we get large amounts of snow. Typically it'll drift in and even drift up to the building. So when there's a, if there's a fire drill or anything that where kids have to go out those back entrances, it's usually drifted in. So. Uh, this would allow for excess or exit, and we'd be able to plow it easily. Right now, we typically will run um, a snow blower or a plow through the grass, but it, it typically doesn't cut it. So um, this will be a good addition. I'm sure the fire department will appreciate it, and uh, much easier to upkeep and keep kids safe. I'll take great one with that. Uh, it's, uh, I will say this: that the fire trucks, if they have to go on it, can go on it. Uh, Request that they don't go on it just for unless there's an emergency. Sure. It's, uh, I believe it's a six inch base and three inches of asphalt. Are we putting anything up to discourage, you know, weekend kids that are driving around there from racing around the building? Or we could definitely do that. Would suggest anything we can to impede traffic from driving around it, sure. but allowing emergency vehicles to have access. Good, yeah. Any other questions, comments? Senate remarks. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> As they did want to say, Steve, this year with all the construction going on at all the other schools, Steve has done a phenomenal job helping with the uh, capital project. So we've had more than usual, but it's in small amounts. So thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Oh, we should get you a certificate or something. <laughs> <laughs> that won't allow him to fit through the door for <laughs> All right, moving on, uh, 7C, 2017-18 calendar PD day. Motion to approve the 2017-2018 staff calendar and parent calendar, and you have one choice to consider either March 2nd as an off day and a, and a staff day or March 5th as an off day for students and a staff day. Correct? That is correct. <laughs> Okay. And that was to address the concern about ACT. It's either Friday after ACT or the Monday following that Friday. That is correct, yes. And you would prefer the Monday following the Friday? Yes. Sounds like. Yes. Okay. I just, how about if we have a motion? So, so second. So, I just, what, not, not that I'm against this, but I, I just find this statement about the high stakes assessment a little bit odd when, I, I mean, with all the co curriculars going on, I think my son or daughter would be much more tired during the week having to take it than they would after a weekend. I, I mean, they're here until, I mean, this high school is open until 10 and around the clock. 
So I'm just curious, I don't need to tell now, but how this, you know, like what data or what are we basing this on? I don't need now, but I, I, I just find that interesting that after a full weekend of not being involved in anything, that we have a policy that, or, or a practice that says we don't do high stake assessments. So what do you mean by not doing anything for the full weekend? Well, my, my guess was that they've probably done some research because they put it on the Tuesday for right. some reason. So, so I'm guessing there must be some research that on a Monday or maybe... Right, I'm just I'm curious sure. what that is because I'm thinking, I'm looking at my son and daughter's schedule and I'm thinking it's packed Monday through Thursday till sometimes 9 or 10, but it's not on the weekend as, as much. So there's actually more opportunity, at least from my observation, to rest over the weekend than, than it is during the week not to mention school, uh, homework, other tests to prepare for. It just seemed strange that there was actually, you know, I, I'm just curious on what the data is that suggests that high-stake assessments aren't good on Mondays. i just curious. Same one as confirmation on Sunday night. It's a big chunk. Well, <laughs> no, they're having a Friday. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. They switched that. Well, they did. Days. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, yeah, but that that's another odd thing. Um, yeah, so that's all. Just, I'd be interested to know. Thank you. Christy, is there anything that you wanted to chime in on at all? Um, I just w wanted to make sure that it was clear that the state of Wisconsin sets the ACT yeah. testing date, not the district. Um, and we um, want to make sure that we're particularly careful in ensuring that students attend school on the statewide ACT testing day um, because if they're not tested, um, the district actually isn't able to count those students and it goes against the report card. Um, so there's the, there's the piece about students testing and then there's the requirement of the participation. We have to have 90% of our students participate. What, are, what is our participation rate or what has, what has been last year's? Last year it was 94%. Do they have a makeup date or something second? We do have a makeup date. Mm -hmm. And that's also set by the state. You included that though the that's everything, right? The those students who took it during the regular and the makeup date, right? That's that's ninety four. Mm-hmm. Ninety four percent. Do you think it'd be higher though? Well? I guess I thought it'd be higher. Right. Right, maybe yeah, just for some reason. Because with the with two dates, that I mean that's kinda nice, right? Mm-hmm. I guess it's kind of a tough sell to some high school you know, junior that knows he's not going to college that, geez, I can just not take this test and I have a day off. <laughs> or I can do this test that I'm not going to use. It's probably a tough sell. 6%, I think. Yeah, I, um, so I think we're picking the calendars with, with their yep. recommendation of March 5th. Can we get a motion to that? I'll move for approval of the calendar for that uh, professional day on March 5th, 2018. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. 7D, 2017-18 employee handbook. Motion to approve revisions to the employee handbook as presented and with the addition of grading for learning language, as you see below. So moved. Second. Discussion? This was information, and you can probably, did, were you part of the discussion on grading for learning? This was information that was brought forward recently just to have clarification in the employee handbook about um, the expectations for when grades should be in the system unavailable for parents. So it just, my understanding is we're getting away from staff handbooks at the individual school level, so we wanted just to clarify from a district perspective what the expectations are. So essentially this is putting an emphasis on making sure that the uh, uh, campus, campus, campus is, is up to date, correct. Wonderful. That was a wish of the board. Very strong wish of the board. <laughs> All right. Any further discussion? Any none all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Thank you. 7E, 
policies and administrative guidelines. Motion to approve policy and administrative guideline revisions as presented. Sound one. Second. Any individual questions or comments on any of these? The graph was really helpful. So thanks for that. As far as just lumping them together? I like that. That's right. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Moving on to 7L. Gifts, grants, and bequests. Motion to accept with thanks the following gifts. Mosquito High School, Friends of MHS Music Makers, $2,658 for a digital mallet instrument. And engineering specialists, $200 for MHS robotics. So moved. Second. Discussion. Thank you. Thank you. So I got to ask, what is a digital mallet? So if you heard during the musical things that sounded closer to maybe a piano, but they weren't a piano. They sound more like. Was there a piano there? Yes, there was. So if you think more of like the techno pop kind of sound of 70s music, that was all with the digital mallet instrument, if my understanding is correct. So here's what happened. So I was particularly interested in this because music friends put up a lot of money for this. So I went down to the pit to look at it, and Mr. Beckman made a point of saying, A, he loved it. B, he wished he would have had access to this instrument like seven years ago, if not before. So what it does is it replaces, I think he said four to five other instruments. And if you've ever looked down at the pit for the musicals, typically you can't move once you're in there. Like you're crawling over people to get in space. They kind of had to go in at the right time and then go out at the right time. So this actually created an aisle for the first time. They were thrilled because they could move around. They had space. They weren't all on top of each other. So it's like the whiz bang, oh my gosh, wonderful instrument. What's it look like? Is it like a keyboard? It looks kind of keyboard-ish. It's big. And who plays it? I mean, we just got this. Do you use a mallet on it? Yes, I believe so. So anybody who does percussion would learn how to play it. I think you have like four or five people play it. I think so, right? Because it's big. I mean, it's really big. Because that was my next thing. Okay, so great, we cleared an aisle, but now we have five kids that now don't participate in the musical. No, they, yeah. And they're cross-trained on so many instruments at that school. So, yeah, it was very well done. It's stereo, though. They're going to get rid of them all. Here's a picture. Is this what it looks like? I think so. Yeah. Looks like a xylophone. It does. But, again, digital. So you can change the sound. So instead of having a xylophone and a... You can change it so it starts to sound like a lot of different instruments. So it's very versatile. Interesting. Sweet. Thanks for that education. You bet. All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Moving on to discussion items. 8A, MPC update. So there are multiple items that we have to update the board on. As usual, our core planning team is meeting every other Wednesday to look over agendas, discussions, building plan designs. You have access to that in the CPT folder, the Google folder that's been shared with you. Also, the links in the administrative contents. Secondly, we continue to meet with Bray staff every other Wednesday to discuss other master planning projects, such as the football turf project, as well as pool needs. And that can also be found in the administrative content below. The core planning team round two bid packages is scheduled on Wednesday, March 15th. We did add a core planning team meeting, which includes subcontractor approvals, on March 29th from 1 to 3 p.m. And we still hold the April 26th CPT planning, 1 to 5 p.m. as previously scheduled. Meetings will be posted in the event that more than three members, board members, are in attendance. So the board meetings immediately following these CPT meetings will include information and follow-up item for board review. The fourth item, District and Bray discussed the water connection options with Muskego's Common Council and their committee of the whole on March 14th. In the end, a cost-sharing approach was reached 
uh, the city will be responsible for the cost to complete the full loop to Tudor Oaks and all easement costs. In addition, the city will provide a capture opportunity for the districts. Uh, the fifth item on our update is tied to the school naming process. Just wanted to keep the board apprised of what's happened uh, up to this point in time. We sent out a community postcard with the survey link and directions on how to give input. You may have received that at your at your home. Let's see what the link like, which will probably be tomorrow or the next day. Excellent, thank you. The uh, uh, Dr. Thompson sent out a parent message through Infinite Campus, her regular monthly superintendent message to parents that had the survey information on it and how to complete it. We posted the survey on the school library website and we have corresponding announcements that are going out to the students so that they can participate also in the survey. The, uh, we also sent out an infinite campus message to parents from each one of the respective schools. If that hasn't gone out either Thursday or Friday, it certainly will be going out. Uh, it either went out today or it's going to be going out tomorrow from all respective schools. Again, as a reminder to our parents, and then lastly, we have bi-weekly communication that's going to be going up tomorrow uh, or Wednesday to all district staff. So in case they're interested in participating, uh, they also can. So again, really trying to capture the directive from the board as far as making this a community event, allowing the community to give input into school naming, uh, whether it be the new middle school or consideration of Mill Valley. Uh, and the current Country Meadows site. And then lastly, uh, we are planning a groundbreaking ceremony for the new middle school for Monday, June 5th. We believe that there is going to be a driveway in place. The <laughs> band's back there letting us know that there will be. Uh, so there's going to be more information coming on that, and then we'll have a ribbon cutting and open house ceremony that's going to be scheduled for the new middle school and uh, newly renovated Mill Valley in the summer of 2018. Jeff, the two meetings this week were canceled. Also, the two meetings this week were canceled, if anybody was planning on coming. The MDCs. Yeah. 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 Uh, Kelly, I would say soon we're all getting those invites and cancellations. Yeah, there you go. Thank I you. just have one question you don't have to answer tonight. When I was looking through all your attachments that I could get to under additional master plan projects. Area. So I went to the old rendering, which is a field aerial of the football field area. And it shows a parking lot that goes south, south to... Uh, you know, probably 20 to 30 feet from the um, football or the um, softball field fences. You see that? Mm -hmm. Then I went to the new rendering, which shows you want. It looks like they wanted to increase parking um, because they added a row, and it basically has the asphalt going right up to the softball field fences with I don't see any room for any bleachers or dugouts on the north side of those two fields. So just something to look at. Mm -hmm. Good feedback. I would just note that there's been no civil done on any of the, the parking lots. It's just like a plot just kind of threw it in there. Just since it's, that, example. it's that point with this with the building anyway. No, I understand. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, questions? <laughs> Moving on to discussion item 8B, 2016-17, debt defeasance. So in your um, attached in board docs is a document um, that shows the summary of the cash defeasance. So again, back at the annual meeting, uh, we were able to levy additional money to support paying down debt um, while still keeping the levy um, below zero. And so the board did approve an amount of 570000 The attachment shows um, this is just our 43.18 million dollar debt option. 
um, this isn't all of the Fund 39 debt, but this it shows the de before defeasance, what the debt schedule looked like running through 2036, and the after defeasance. So again, we would be applying um, 550000 to pay off additional principal. Um, that will happen throughout the term of the bond, but mostly toward the end. So way on the right side of the document, you'll see the reduction in Fund 39 debt service. So that'll be a direct re reduction of the tax levy starting in um, the 2018 year. That will continue through the end of the term of the bond. In the last year, we'll pay an additional 533000 um, out of the escrow account where that money will be sitting which will allow us to reduce the overall cost um, of the debt by $274,914. So this is information for your review. I can take questions if you have them. Um, the next step would be on April 10th to actually have a, the board approve a resolution um, allowing for the defeasance to move forward. We would close that date and lock in, um, lock in the terms of the escrow agreement at that time. Any questions here? <laughs> <laughs> She's here in spirit with us. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Uh, item 8C, 2017 18 budget. Standing. Standing item. Any particular things you want to bring to community's attention for future discussion? All right. Moving on to item 8D, city request for trail easement. Mike, would you like to put the microphone and explain what you guys need? Sure, thanks. Good evening. Uh, the city of Franklin is planning to uh, construct a... Uh, city of who? Uh, Eagle. <laughs> Long day. <laughs> um, city of Mosquito, thank you. Is planning to construct a uh, path similar to what we get right now along, along the woods. Uh, this would be along Racine Avenue from high school. Um, so what we're asking for is similar to last year. I think the city uh, requested a uh, was it an easement for more of a uh, more of an agreement, a uh, license agreement for a 25 foot wide um, piece of land for the uh, for the path itself. And there'd be no cost to the city as far as the or to the school district as far as the path. And be, you know, obviously a good thing for, for student safety to use. Continuation of the city's uh, trail they have currently. Any questions for Mike? So this is actually just some This is actually to complete the trail from just on our grounds on high school, right? Across. How far how far around south are they going on this trail? It's going. Further south, past, I believe, about four homes, past the uh, creek, mm -hmm. and ties an existing path there. Okay. So essentially the trail will run up to the what subdivision is that? Yeah. It'll tie kind of like two dead ads. We'll kind of complete that so, so it ties right to the yeah. existing one. So exactly. Yeah. So, then, so then after this we have, uh, okay, so then, because we have our trail on the east or on the north side, and then it jumps to the south side by the high school. And then, okay, so, so you have one, one last point that's from, uh, what, what is that, Durham to Tess Corners right. on the north side? I'm not sure what side it would probably that. And that effectively then ties that whole rectangle from Racine to Jane's, from Racine to Tess Corners along James Miller Woods Road, you would have a clear path and connectivity to three uh, trails. Yeah, that's nice. Questions? Concerns? What do you want next from us? What I, I submit to uh, Jeremiah tonight, I'd get to folks electronically, is just the license agreement itself. Again, it's very similar to what you did last year along the woods. Uh, same type of agreement. Or an overview and approval by the school board. When do, when do they plan on starting this? I hope we have it done this summer. Hopefully, we have it done before school starts in the fall. Be the goal. And the maintenance of it? 
city. City. How many chains of power would you do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, on that note. So, thank you. Um, so, right now, we don't plow the trip. The city doesn't plow them during the winter. The city does plow them. They, do plow. they just have they, So, when they get to them, they get to them. I think that signs so that that's that's are not going to be plowed. Or is that just priority? Or because there are signs up there that say that. Or what does that say? It says it won't. I think believe they say they won't be plowed, but they do plow them when they okay. get to them. Yeah. So, so, they, so is that going to be an issue for us here that we need them plowed? Well, I don't know if we actually need them plowed. Which is, I mean, okay. We don't actually so need a trail because the trails run up to our property lines already. So. So we would do for, it. So for. More than likely, I think okay. you guys would probably win. We have in the past, if the city hasn't gotten to it and we're running around, I'll make a little Yeah, it's just more for students, students because if they're going to use it. Yeah. The city yeah. does it, but if, if it's been a day or two and they haven't gotten to it and I'm yeah. buzzing there, it takes me a couple minutes to buzz all the way up. And right. Yeah, because I know they, they put those, you know, because they were wrecked trails on the right. sidewalks, so they get through that. Which so, has always been my but, concern because. Yeah. yeah. We, ultimately, we're going to end up doing probably most of the time because it's okay. Going to as long as we're fine with that, because I would I would want it if we're going to have it there. I would want it cleared somehow. So sure. Whatever. Okay. Thank you. Do you do you hit the one on the north side or the, on the on the north part of our property here? Yeah, that's there? the one we. You typically hit that like if, every snowfall. If it hasn't been done in like a day after it snows and we're caught up, I'll run down it. Um, the one thing that we've noticed with plowing some of the paths back here is that if they don't get salted, they get icy, and I know we don't salt those paths, and I don't think you guys do either, so that's just one thing okay. to keep an eye on, too. The snow banks melt on there, and they get icy. So I can't help but think that, you know, if we were asking to be building this, you would have, we would, you would have us design it by you, build it, and then charge us whatever it is, so the fact that you guys are doing it. All the cost. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the, the pads are a good thing, so we'll move forward. Get the, we'll get the legal documents going back and forth, and if we need anything, we'll work it out with the attorneys at that point. Good, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Moving on with discussion items 8E, textbooks. So um, this is just the annual textbook um, recommendations from the CPC committee. Um, the first document listed is a summary of all of the textbook um, recommendations for the various levels and content areas. If you recall, last spring um, we brought forward the PDSA cycle for science and what the, the plan was um, for science. We purchased K4 FOSS kits. Um, due to the, the cost of those kits, we decided to do that in two year, a two-year phase in. So this year we'll be purchasing the middle school level FOSS kits and some of the high school textbooks um, in the area of science. Those two um, levels in that particular content area are substantial on, this, um, on the bid here. Um, we have Spanish and French phase two. Um, we purchased half of their um, textbook needs last year, and we're finishing up um, this year for the other half. AP Human Geography is just seeing a spike in enrollment, and this is the second year in a row where we've purchased textbooks for them. Um, AP Psychology, uh, we had to resubmit our, um, we, were, we had an AP audit, and we were using a high school level psychology book prior to um, this purchase. So currently we're using a high school psychology book. We were grandfathered in um, with that book with several supplements. Um, but now we're going to be moving to the AP textbook, um, which is a lovely resource um, that many school districts use in our area. and. Um, Margaret Pine is very excited about um, the resource and the opportunities um, that she doesn't have currently with her high school level psychology book. Um, so that kind of just summarizes what you see here. All of these textbooks will be coming out of the 2017-18 textbook budget in the curriculum, out of curriculum. And the CPC did review these, and they're all within the budget. 
are all with in the Yes, council. these are. Any mm-hmm. other questions, comments? So anything brought forward is. All right, thank you. Mm-hmm. We got to item nine, information follow up. Any questions on those two items? Uh, specifically for item 9B, Dan is here for anyone has specific questions on any of the items that were let out to bid and accepted. I got a question. I got two questions. We have Dan, so we're good. Uh, one of them might not be for Dan, one might be for Jeremiah. Um, who did our original concrete work on the front of the high school in 2002? I believe Hans Inger did it. Yeah, they did. They performed self concrete. Okay, just making sure we're not going back to the same company there. And then the other question I had was, if you give me a moment, um, here because they won't necessarily bid out if there's a construction manager in place. Is that correct? Sometimes uh, they feel there's better opportunities elsewhere. But okay, we did let everybody know that the bids for those work categories would go directly to school district and we open them mind. together. So it was all clean and clear so there was no issues for any type of game. Try and make it as as appealing as possible. We could, I mean, we could make a couple follow-up phone calls if you would prefer that. Not necessarily. I just wanted to feel comfortable in my mind because mm-hmm. after I looked through all of these, if I was just a, uh, 
if I was a provider of any of these services, I think that one would kind of, to me, sure. throw up a red flag. Mm -hmm. But if you're comfortable with it, I just don't want it to be questioned later and find there was some inconsistency in that bidding process. And I can't speak to the specific item, but I do know on other ones, you know, especially when we were going through these last week, Dan did make efforts with a number of the categories of making sure you know, we're getting bids in, you know, just to try to keep the cost on and make it as competitive as possible. Yeah. Do we have a, I think we asked for like a ongoing graph as to where we are. Yes. Yeah. This, this that's where we are right now. That's how it's Bid totals, and I think that's in your attachment, isn't it? Is this in there? That full document should be in there. Let me double check. Oh, it's not in there. Yeah, I have an extra one too if anybody wants a copy of it. The front page wasn't attached. We're in a very good position as far as bids go. Middle school, we'll start going through a lot of those numbers. Uh, we have a meeting next week. Uh, they go through some of the structure and enclosures there. We were, we're picking up about quite a few dollars compared to budget on the bills. HVAC bids came in on Friday. Uh, we're under budget there as well. We're in good shape. And we're looking for water money now. All the bids seem like they're, you know, within reason what, what the original instruments were, except for maybe the glass and glazing. That would be a pipe to it. Is there a reason for that? We just, when we first went, Estimated the out was it just we didn't anticipate that. I much. think the square footage is, is comparable to, to where we were on last month. I just think uh, some of the contractors that were kind of helping us with budgets there were using the market for. We uh, got a couple sliders, uh, those were always in the scope. That was in the scope? Uh, there isn't really anything that I can point to that would. Explain that over just, it's just a general overage. Uh, at the middle school, um, we did not have that, that problem on those numbers. Uh, it was pretty long. So I was uh, a little concerned there if that was going to become uh, an issue at the middle school. If we missed it by so many percent here, just be magnified at the middle school because it's much larger, but that wasn't. Thanks for coming. Thank you. No problem. We were very, very done before you got here. <laughs> <laughs> 29th. Uh, we got about 10 more. Uh, so, the numbers that we go through are going to finish up the end of uh, April with the balance. By the end of this month, we'll have bids in for the entire project. We have plumbing and fire protection are, are out to bid right now for the middle school. That's due on the 31st. And all the country medals is due on the 29th. So really the only thing that we'll need to bid uh, after this month is playgrounds. And that just determines if that's something that would be part of us or separate from the district. Okay. Yeah, five minutes. Just, if you could wait five minutes, just go ahead and question if you have that. We'll be happy with it. Thanks, Dan. Can I get a motion to move into closed session? So if you want to wait for sure. it, I'll read it first. <laughs> uh, for Wisconsin State Statute 19.85 sub 1 sub E, for the purpose of deliberating or negotiating concerning public properties whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session, specifically, specifically sale of public property. So, all those in favor of going into closed session at 9 o'clock, say aye. 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 Opposed? So in closed session at 9 o'clock, we will be coming back into open session only for the purpose of adjourning. We will not be taking any action on anything afterwards. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>